labial bow adjustment. Anytime you have an appliance and sports plate when you're starting to activate transversely, as you activate transversely, the labial bow will retract. And that's okay if you want the labial bow to retract if you have protrusive incisors, such as the appliance you see here, and you can just allow it to retract naturally. If you do not want the anterior teeth to retract, you take a flat on flat to take the bow out of contact. There's four bins in activating a labial bow. First bend is to place inside the omega, squeeze, which will take the bow anteriorly. You go to the opposing side in the omega, squeeze, and it takes the bow anteriorly. Now as I have overactivated, just to show the process of activating, but it will also take the bow up gingivally to level the bow. You have to go to the 90 degree bend on the labial bow. Place right in the corner, squeeze, and when you squeeze the labial bow in the corner, it brings it back down incisally, and you do this bilaterally. Squeeze both sides, which will then level your labial bow. Place in contact, then you have the bow level with the incisors, and ready to go. Okay, when you activate the bow and take it out of contact with the flat on flat, the bow should be about one millimeter away from the incisors. Unless you're trying to derotate a tooth, what you want to do is keep the bow in contact with the part of the tooth that is most labial and not the part that is lingual, and that will help derotate as you expand. Now, as you see, I've taken the bow too far out of contact, so to bring the bow back into contact, you take the three jaw plier, place in the omega, one jaw inside, two jaw on the top and squeeze to retract. Go to the other side, squeeze to retract. Now as you squeeze and retract the bow, the bow will go more incisal like this to level the bow. You have to take the three jaw, one jaw inside the corner, two jaw straddling the corner, squeeze, which will level the bow and bring the bow more gingivally. You do this bilaterally and this will level your labial bow and bring it back into contact. Now the bow is centered in the right position. That is activating the labial bow, taking it out of contact and bringing it back into contact. Now many times when you get a labial bow and as you start your expansion, the occlusion may get in the way. Your lower cuspid may hit the labial bow as it crosses the occlusion. In this set of typodonts it does not hit, but for example if the bow is hitting in this section, you could take a flat on flat and or a jaraback plier. This is a jaraback plier, serrated tip, needle nose on one side, and or a flat on flat, which is two flat ends. Basically, you'll take the bow right next to the acrylic, turn the bow down toward the teeth. Now the top of the bow will come inward. You can go step out about another two millimeters and put a step down bend which will bring, bring the top of the bow back out of contact and then that will take the labial bow out of the occlusion into the proper position. If the bow is sticking out too far, take the top of the labial bow, turn it toward the tissue just by twisting the plier such as this and then it will bring the bow back into contact so it's not impinging in the cheek.